Hello again, this is the body practice section of the Getting Started videos. And now we'd like to talk about uh, what practices you can do for the body and why cultivating a body practice is so important. In Shakti Shaiva Dharma and Tantric Yoga, we, as we said in the first video, are composed of three centers. So we're not just a medita meditation tradition or just a study tradition. We are a tradition that focuses on balance of all centers. This means we have to take into consideration our body, our physicality, our health, and so on. So the first and most important body practice that all practitioners of Tantric Yoga follow is cultivation of health. For that, I suggest that you, if you haven't already, study Primal Ayurveda. You can also find links for Primal Ayurveda in this website as well and how to learn that. Ayurveda is a system of health science that's related to life. It's not really a system of medicine per se, although the way to heal diseases is included in Ayurveda. By learning the principles of Ayurveda and the practices of Ayurveda, and you incorporate them in your normal life, you basically cultivate your health. Now, the goal of this is not to have radiant health, to be like a super athlete or to live long because we're afraid to die or you know, any of these kind of things. The reason that we cultivate our health in Tantric Yoga is that it gives us a way to be sensitive and to be aware of each moment. Uh, in other words, am I feeling hot or cold right now? Am I feeling wet or dry, rough or smooth, heavy or light, these different qualities? Based on how I feel about those qualities, I can then dictate what situation I should be in that would balance that for me. What types of food I should eat, what environment I should be in, what type of work I should engage in or play, etc. So cultivating our health through Primal Ayurveda is a very first step in body practice. And it's an ongoing journey. It can take 5, 10, 15 years. It can go forever. I'm still learning. It's wonderful. But we apply it every moment. And this would be where we want to start for a foundation. Remember, if you're born with some kind of congenital disease, or you have some type of limitation through an injury that healed in a certain way or so on, it does not mean that you cannot excel at tantric yoga practice. When we say body practice, we're not saying you have to be a high-level yogin, a gumby or a pretzel. You, know. you can just practice the body practices to increase your sensation, increase your sensibility, which will increase your rapport with the universe, with your actual situation, with your loved ones, with your workmates. This is the whole idea. If we only pay attention to our, say, mental practices or uh, visualizations or something like this, or only work with our emotions without really attending to the body, the practice is not complete. Hmm? All right. So <clears throat> when we talk about body practice, the second most important practice is some type of conscious embodiment, some type of way of movement. This movement needn't be harsh. In fact, the original yoga textbooks tell us not to have strenuous experiences with our body, not to perform asana in a strenuous way, and so forth. So it's very different than what commercial yoga is selling as yoga today. In the path of tantric yoga, you needn't be austere or harsh on your body. In fact, it's thought to be counterproductive. So what are we talking about instead? Conscious embodiment is about moving the body and developing an awareness of how your body is put together, how it arises out of essence, what its channel system is, and so on. Uh, maybe you're not into yoga, so I'll address that for a moment. You might find that yoga is just not your thing. You may have physical limitations or just not be attracted to it or something like that. I would suggest you experiment and try the yoga practices that we uh, recommend in this video here. The Adi Yoga Gate 1, which can also be found in the Dharma Inc. website under Adi Yoga section the what's called P1, P2, and P3 series are the beginner series that help rectify the energies in the channels, help the joints and tissues gain a certain sense of function and flexibility without being harsh. These are very simple movements and allow us to balance what are called doshas in primal Ayurveda or the energies uh, and quality experiences that keep us in health or disease. That's actually the foundation before we practice asana anyway, regular yoga asana. So we recommend you at least try it and see how you like it. If you like it and you realize it uh, comes with the system, so it makes it more cohesive and congruent for you to move to higher stages by using it, that's great. We highly recommend that. If not, conscious embodiment could be also cultivated through certain types of martial arts. Mm, there are certain martial arts that give a sense of the channels and tell you to think about the centers of being. In this case, the martial arts that are related to Orthodox Taoism are very um, compatible with cultivating a body practice and using the rest of the Tantric Yoga practices in case yoga doesn't really do it for you. Hatha Yoga doesn't do it. 
So you can think about those. Those would be Taiji and Bagua and Xingyi, if you don't know those names, and many other systems, but you can look up that. So, but I, I am going to say that uh, practicing uh, and learning Ayurveda and learning Hatha Yoga and the Adi Yoga system will make uh, more of a cohesive experience for yourself as you move into deeper and deeper practices, being that the languaging, especially, that's used around the body, around health cultivation with Ayurveda, around the body, its channels and so forth, in the Hatha Yoga, the Kundalini Hatha Yoga, will be congruent with the practices and meditations you will learn as you move through the system. So it makes it a little easier. But I don't think anybody should be restricted uh, if they don't really grab yoga that, that strongly. There are some forms of dance that can also be used as conscious embodiment that um, take into consideration channels and energies and so forth. Uh, you have to research pretty hard to find them, but they may exist and you can find those too. So conscious embodiment is an important aspect of the tantric yoga practice. It, it deals again with this lower center and developing that fully. This will help us with our uh, understanding of our, our place in the world, our strength, our boundaries, uh, how to use boundaries as places where we can meet instead of places that we have to kind of keep to push people out. Because when we're really comfortable with our body, when we have conscious embodiment, we can really feel rapport with all situations, all people, and um, not feel like we have to be armored or guarded in any way. We don't feel unsafe. And this is a very important basis for being in life itself and to have a wonderful result from tantric yoga practice. So uh, we want to explore that relationship of our, our body and its energy with uh, the universe around us. And this happens through conscious embodiment. It'll smooth our channels. If we practice the Adi Yoga, especially the series P1, 2, and 3, it'll smooth our channels and so forth. P1 is actually designed, uh, or the series called P1 is designed as movements that will begin to slowly open the channels and get the joints moving and take the wind out of the joints. This is crucial because doing heavier exercise or stronger yoga on joints that already contain too much wind element, as we say in Primal Ayurveda and Hatha Yoga, will produce damage, will produce osteoarthritis or other kinds of arthritis in the joints. So the P1 series will take care of that. The P2 series takes care of creating a very powerful digestive fire so that toxins can be digested. Excess tissues are not accumulated. Environmental toxins that we gain through eating and through water and breathing can be eliminated. Basically our liver, spleen, gallbladder, digestive tract function can be increased. That's very important for longevity, health, and for relating to the outer world. The third series is about removing energy blocks and it's a bit more dynamic than the first two series. We put more energy into it, more oomph. And it really, it really addresses some long-term tightening and thickening of tissues that may have occurred in the body, which can cause a deadening of sensation in those areas or a restricted motion in those areas, a range of motion, which also is a kind of deadening, a type of unawareness in a body sense. So these three series are scientifically put together by tantric yogins from many thousands of years ago, and they really do wonderful things for setting up our our deeper practice for energy, our energy center and our mind center, and they go together. So please explore those. When the channels are flowing more smoothly and our tissues feel good, our mind will be more smooth. In tantric yoga practice, it's important to understand that the mind and the energy are not separate things. The mind and the body are not separate things. Three are one. So if we do these proper gentle practices of P1, 2 and 3, our mind and our energy and our body will relax. The channels will get smooth flowing with energy, will be smooth flow of energy. Our mind will start to relax naturally and rest in its own nature. This means that, you know, you don't have to do forced concentration for years and years and years, frustrated with the results or lack of results. In Tantra Yoga, it's a very natural system. And we find that enlightenment and the steps to enlightenment come very naturally if we just go along with the mechanism we were born with. That is our body and its activity, our energy, sensation and emotion, and our mind, our perceptions and thinking. So, <clears throat> when you feel that you've uh, gone through these Adi Yoga Gate 1 practices of P1, 2, 3, and the breathing practices that are there as well, there's a lot there and I, I urge you to explore it all, the relaxations and the breathing and so forth. What I want you to do is uh, practice slowly. There's a lot of material there in that whole first gate manual, which is online available to you for free. 
Um, you don't want to overwhelm yourself in the beginning. The most important thing when you begin practicing, especially with a body practice, you know, all of us are feeling lazy. We get out of the bed in the morning. We don't really want to get out of the bed most times. And if we do, the last thing, last thing we want to do is jump into some physical practice for most of us. Uh, we need to develop slowly the habit of conscious embodiment. So don't try to launch into an hour every morning and say, I'm going to do this forever because it's very difficult to maintain. And when we stop and we, we break that pattern, then we feel like we've failed. So it's much better, much better, as one of my teachers said, to do five minutes a day and don't miss. If you do that, the natural appetite will grow for more. Five minutes will turn into 10, 10 into 20, and so forth. Next thing you know, you'll have a nice morning conscious embodiment practice to whatever time you have available. You may be wishing you had more time later. So start with five or 10 minutes. Pick, uh, say, four or five movements from the P1 series, one or two movements from the P2 series, and say one or two movements from the P3 series. Work with those, that might take you five or 10 minutes, and then maybe the next week or two weeks later, rotate them again so you're not bored, but stay with the same amount of time, five or 10 minutes a morning. So you don't get uh, overwhelmed in the beginning, and also you don't say, gee, I don't have enough time. So you develop a nice habit. So work like this. It's really good if you can do a morning session, but it's really great if you can do a morning and an evening session. Five or 10 minutes of these body practices before you go to sleep will start to give you better sleep, much better sleep, deeper, rejuvenative, healing, relaxing sleep. And this is also a very important part of the path that we rejuvenate, yeah? that we have a lot of life force energy and we feel smooth with that life force energy, not erratic or frantic, the way coffee, cigarettes can make us, you know, this kind of thing. So cultivate your body practice in the ways I just mentioned. Um, if you can get to an Adi Yoga class presented near you at one of the Adi Yoga centers internationally, uh, that would that'd be a great idea to learn more and go deeper into it this way with instruction. And when you feel that uh, you've understood what's happening in this video, then move to the next video on energy practice. And I'll see you there.